dear friends i am going to teach you now the last lecture of the semester and that is the maxwell's equation and before maxwell's given this equation or modification in ampere's law what was the maxwell's equation was there what was the elect actually electromagnetic equations were there which were governing totally electromagnetism so we'll be starting with the basic laws so 731 this is also i have taken from the same book that is griffith so electrodynamics before maxwell so far we have encountered the following laws specifying the diversion and curl of electric and magnetic fields so now we are moving to the electrodynamics that means electric field and magnetic field that is a function of r and t it is a function of position also as well as time also so it is a dynamic so the first law which is governing the electricity or electric field with respect to the charge density which is known as a cassis law so divergence of e is equal to rho upon epsilon 0 this law you know very well. you can write in this way also divergence of t is equal to rho because epsilon 0 will be multiplied with e then it becomes d vector displacement electric field vector second law is the divergence of b is equal to 0 the third law is curl of e is equal to minus del b upon del t and the fourth law which is curl of b is equal to mu 0 j which is known as a ampere's law previous one was faraday's law so this law are related with the divergence and curl of electric and magnetic fields and that's why they are governing electromagnetic fields what is the meaning of this law understand try to understand the first law divergence of e is equal to rho upon epsilon 0 that relates with the electric fields and charge density rho volume charge density rho that means if there is a charge distribution is there because of that the electric field is going to be generated second law is also similar law divergence of b is equal to 0 that means there is no charge there is no magnetic charge exists which can generate the magnetic field third law electric field also can be generated by changing the magnetic field so if the magnetic field b is changing with respect to time del b upon del t that is time derivative of the magnetic field that is comes from the faraday's law so if the magnetic field is changing with respect to time that also can generate the electric field and the fourth law that is curl of b that is equal to mu 0 j j is the current density what it indicates that charge in a motion that is constitute a current that current is responsible to produce a magnetic field so these are the law which are a basic law which are governing electricity and magnetism at that era before maxwell has started its work this equation represents the state of electromagnetic theory in the mid 19th century when Maxwell began his work. They were not written in so compact a form in those days, but their physical content was familiar. So whatever I have explained is nothing but the physical interpretation of this mathematical forms. They were written after the curl and divergence specified, and then it was written in a short term. Now it happens that there is a fatal inconsistency in this formula. So this formula are true only for steady state phenomena that is electrostatic and magnetostatic. It is true. But when it comes to the dynamics, then this law that is specially Ampere's law was not consistent with formulas. It has to do with the old rules that divergence of curl is always zero. So if we take divergence of equation 3 and 4, both the side, then we can say that the divergence of curl is always 0. So we have to verify this thing for the equation number 3 as well as equation number 4. So you can see that it has to do with the old rules that divergence of curl is always 0. If you apply the divergence to the number equation number 3, everything works out. Divergence of curl of E that is equal to divergence of minus del b upon del t because the third law Faraday's law of induction curl of e is equal to minus del b upon del t 
So on this low, we applied divergence both the sides. Now what happens? On the left hand side, divergence of curl of any vector function is always zero. So that is true. So on the left hand side, it is going to be zero. Right hand side, we have to see. Now we have to verify. Divergence of del B upon del T. What is del? Del is nothing but actually space derivative. That is del del x i caret plus del del y j caret plus del del z k caret. That means this is a differential operator which is actually differentiating with respect to x, y, z space coordinate. And del del t is also derivative but it is differentiating with respect to time coordinates. So we can interchange the time derivative and space derivative and we can write this equation in this form. So minus del del t of divergence of b. Now from the second rules divergence of b is equal to 0. So if you substitute here this term is also going to be 0. That means right hand side and left hand side is going to be true. That means this the divergence of curve is always 0 is true for the equation number 3 that is for the Faraday's law of induction is true in a steady state condition as well as in a dynamic conditions. Now the same thing we can apply for the fourth law. The left hand side is 0 because the divergence of curl is 0. The right side is by virtue of equation 2. But when you do this same thing to the number 4, you get into trouble. Now we apply on the equation number 4. Divergence of curl of P is equal to mu 0 divergence of J. Now what is the divergence of J? Try to remember. Divergence of J is equal to minus del rho upon del t equation of continuity which is also called a charge conservation law. So the charge conservation law cannot be failed. So it is accepted as one of the postulates. So del dot j that is equal to minus del rho upon del t. What is minus del rho upon del t? Rho is volume charge density or charge which is changing with respect to time at any cross section is going to be 0 that is in a steady state condition. Now with a any circuit if there is a DC battery is connected and current is passing through that one then you know about Kirchhoff's law. What is Kirchhoff's law says that amount of charge entering to any area of the cross section the same amount of the charge leaving to any other area of the cross section in same time interval that means charge is not going to be uh, stop anywhere and the current is going to be steady. So in that case del rho upon del t is going to be 0. So in a steady state conditions when the current is going to be constant, current is flowing constant when you are connecting a meter and current does not change then in that case this del rho upon del t is going to be 0 that means divergence of j is equal to 0 and on the right hand side also mu 0 into 0 that is going to be 0. So right hand side is also going to be 0, left hand side is also going to be 0. So equation 4, MPS law is true for magnetostatic or for steady state conditions. It is no problem. But when it comes to the dynamic conditions, we will see that what will happen. For steady currents, the divergence of J is 0. But when we go beyond the magnetostatic, MPS law cannot be right. There is another way to see that Ampere's law is bound to fail for non-steady currents. Suppose we are in a process of charging up a capacitor. So in integral form Ampere's law reads that the line integration of B dot DL that is equal to mu 0 I n circle. I n circle means inside the law the summation of the currents that is going to be I n circle. I want to apply it for the Ampere's law shown in the diagram. How do I determine I n circle? Well, it is the total current passing through the law or more precisely the current piercing a surface that has the low for it steady boundary. In this case, the simplest surface lies in the plane of the law. The wire punctures this surface. So I n circle is equal to I. So if we consider that two plates of the capacitor, they are parallel plates and both the surface is going to be the plane normal to that surface, the current is passing just like a wire. 
and it is puncturing the surface. In that case, I n circle is equal to I. Fine. But what and that means the law is going to be true, no problem. But what if the, I draw instead the balloon shape surface in figure 7.43? No current passing through this surface, and I conclude in that case I n circle is equal to zero. We'll see in that figure. We never had this problem in the magnetostatic because the conflict arises only when the charge is piling up somewhere. In this case on the capacitor plate. But for non-steady current, such as the one, the current enclosed by the lobe is an ill-defined notation. It depends entirely on what surface you are going to choose. Let us consider this is the two plates of the capacitor. If there are two parallel plates of the capacitor is taken and then the current is passing through this one, then it is a steady current. Then there is no problem then I n circle is equal to I and mu zero I will be there and that means there is no problem. But when you take this kind of balloon shape surface is going to be there, then I n circle is going to be zero that is the through the surface the current which is going is going to be zero. Then the problem is going to be arising because battery is connected the capacitor is going to be charged exponentially for one plate the positive charge is going to be accumulated another plate the negative charge is going to be accumulated and between the plates there is an electric field is going to exist. This electric field is equal to sigma upon epsilon 0. What is sigma? Charge for unit area. Charge surface charge density upon epsilon 0. That is the electric field. Uniform electric field is going to be generated between two plates of the capacitor. Remember this is we require in a further. That is why I have talked here. If this seems pedantic to you, obviously one should use the plane surface. Remember that ampere loop could be some contour shape that does not even lie in the plane. Of course, we had no right to expect ampere law to hold outside the magnetostatic. After all, we derive it from Bioservot law. So, the Bioservot law was the basic and Coulomb's law was the basic in magnetic field or magnetostatic and electrostatic things. And from that, the Ampere's law was derived. That means Ampere's law is true for magnetostatic condition. That means for the steady state condition. However, in Maxwell's time, there were no experimental reason to doubt the Ampere's law was of wide, wider validity. The flow was purely theoretical one. And Maxwell fixed it purely theoretical arguments. Except few scientists, everybody were work mainly an electrodynamics theoretical work was mainly going on. And because the Maxwell's was leading, every theoretical people were more dominant. And that's why whatever they said, people were accepting. Faraday, etc., they were doing some experimental work regarding the induction, etc. Now, how Maxwell fixed the Ampere's law? The problem arises when the steady state condition is not there when the dynamic condition is there, capacitor is charging exponentially. That means in that case, rho is not a constant. Rho is changing with respect to time. So del rho upon del t is not going to be 0. Then divergence of j is not going to be 0. Then on the left hand side, divergence of curl of v is equal to mu 0 divergence of j. But divergence of j is not 0. So left hand side is going to be definitely 0. But right hand side is not 0 and that conflict is created at that time. And this conflict also solved by Maxwell's. The problem is on the right hand side of the equation 7.36, which should be 0. But it is isn't applying the continuity equation. That is, I just told you, divergence of j is equal to minus del rho upon del t. And Gauss's law, offending the term can be rewritten. That is, divergence of j is equal to minus del rho upon del t. This is the equation of continuity minus del del t of. Now, we have substituted rho from the first law, Gauss's law, that is epsilon 0 divergence of e. Now, again, we are interchanging the derivative, time derivative and space derivative. So, we write here the del first, that is space derivative. So, minus del dot 
epsilon 0 del e upon del t this term we can take it on this side both the side divergence is there so we can write the divergence of inside the bracket j plus epsilon 0 del e upon del t this is equal to 0 and if you take curl on both the side then again it is going to be 0 so divergence of curl of is always 0 if we write to combine epsilon 0 del e upon del t with j in ampere slope it would be right to kill off the extra divergence and hence we can write the curl of b is equal to mu 0 j plus mu 0 epsilon 0 del e upon del t so this term was added by maxwell ampere slope was only this that is curl of b is equal to mu 0 j there where j is known as a conduction current density and this is also the another term it is nothing but mu 0 epsilon 0 del e upon del t that is going to be added that is taken from here that is divergence of j plus mu 0 del e upon del t that is going to be 0 and that way this term was derived by Maxwell and that is added here this is known as a displacement current density this term was added by Maxwell by this way <coughs> actually it does not look to be current <coughs> actually in the sense that the charge comes into the motion that is we say it is a current but here the charge does not comes into the motion still it is known as the current why we will see little later such a modification ch changes nothing as far as magnetostatic is concerned when E is constant we still have the curl of B is equal to mu 0 j so if the electric field does not change with respect to time so if it is a steady state condition is there electric field is only a function of r and not t then daily upon del t is going to be zero so this term will not be there again this general equation is converted into the same equation that is curl of b is equal to mu zero j that means current density is responsible to produce a magnetic field so conduction current is responsible and it is the cause to produce a magnetic field that is true in fact Maxwell's term is hard to detect in ordinary electromagnetic experiments where it must compete with the attention with the J. That is why Faraday and other never discover it in the laboratory. Actually, if you see, actually in the next semester, I will show you what is the ratio of the conduction current density to the electromagnetic density. This ratio is also very very high it is in the order of 10 raised to 12 or something that means conduction current density cannot be measurable with the ordinary meter or something ordinary current con conduction current density can be measurable it can be micro ampere it can be milli ampere it can be nano ampere which can be measurable but this current conduction current uh, displacement current density is very very small which cannot be measurable with any of the meter However, it plays a crucial role in the propagation of electromagnetic waves as we shall see in a chapter 9. So, actually for a conduction current density is responsible for the magnetic field, displacement current density is very very small in the size. So, it is not noticeable, but that term is very important in electromagnetic phenomena. So, using that term for electromagnetic waves and all that things a new electromagnetic phenomena was developed. Apart from curing the defect in Ampere's law, Maxwell's term has a certain aesthetic appeal. <coughs> Sorry. Just as a changing magnetic field induced electric field which is nothing but the Faraday's law. So, 
opposite is also true. A changing electric field can induce a magnetic field. That means daily upon del T, which can produce curl of B, that is a Faraday's law of induction, is true. Similar way, in a displacement term, we have seen that daily upon del T, which is also responsible to produce a magnetic field. So, curl of B is equal to mu 0 j plus mu 0 epsilon 0 del E upon del T. So, now there are two sources to produce a magnetic field. One of the source is the conduction current density. Another source is the displacement current density that is del E upon del T. So, if the electric field vector that is displacement vector is changing with respect to time, then also the magnetic field can be produced. Of course, theoretical convenience and aesthetic consistency are only suggestive. There might, after all, be other ways to doctor up Ampere's law. The real confirmation of Maxwell's theory came in 1888 with Hertz experiment of electromagnetic waves. Hertz, in 1888, the electromagnetic waves was produced in laboratory. And then he proved that the electromagnetic waves, which is Maxwell generated theoretically, that is same thing as electromagnetic wave, which is proved by Hertz in an experiment in a laboratory. And light is nothing but made of the electromagnetic waves that is then proved. The Maxwell called this extra term, the displacement current density, JD is equal to epsilon 0 daily upon del T. This term is very important. It is misleading name, epsilon 0 daily upon del T has nothing to do with the currents except that it adds to the current density J in Ampere's law. That is why it is also given a name Ampere current density. Another way also mathematically also will prove that it is why it is called current density. Let us see now how the displacement current resolves the paradox of the charging capacitor. If the capacitor plates are very close to each other, I did not draw them that way, but the calculation is simple. If you assume this, then the electric field between them is, I just discussed when I shown the figure that electric field between the two plates of the capacitor is almost uniform and that is equal to surface charge density sigma upon epsilon 0. What is sigma? Charge per unit area. So, that is equal to Q upon A. So, this equation you can write in this term. 1 upon epsilon 0, sigma is equal to Q upon A, where the Q is the total charge on the plates and A is the area of the plates. That means Q upon A is nothing but surface charge density. Thus, between the plates, if you take the derivative with respect to time, d upon dt, that is equal to <coughs> 1 upon epsilon A, dQ upon dt. And amount of charge passing through any area of the cross section per second is known as a current. So, dq upon dt can be termed as a current I. So, I upon A is nothing but one kind of current density. That means current passing through any unit area of the cross section which is called current density. That is why this term epsilon 0 if it is multiplied this side. So, epsilon 0 daily upon del t is nothing but I upon A that is some kind of current density. And that is why it is termed as a displacement current density. So, del A upon del T is equal to 1 upon epsilon 0 A dQ upon dT that is equal to 1 upon epsilon 0 A into I. Now, equation 7.37 reads in the integral form. This equation can be converted into integral forms. So, the loop line integration of B dot dL over a circular path that is equal to mu 0 I n circle plus mu 0 epsilon 0 the line surface integration of d upon dt dot da. If we choose a flat surface, then E is equal to 0 and I n circle is equal to I. If on the other hand, we use the balloon shaped surface, then I n circle is equal to 0. But the loop integration of, of surface integration of d upon dt dot da that is equal to i upon epsilon 0. So, we get the same answer for either surface through in a first case it comes from the conduction current and in the second case it comes from the displacement current. So, 
this way we are ending this syllabus for unit 1 of electrodynamics of your 5503 before thank you very much friends and i hope that you might have get a some glimpse regarding this lectures if you have any problems you can contact me you can call me also and i will reply also for that thank you very much friends